Good morning, students. Today I want to show you how to prepare a specimen to watch under the microscope and how to uh, prepare it. And first of all, we ha I have done the sampling in the morning and prepared the samples, but uh, after finishing recording this part of the video, I will go back to the field and show you how I have collected the, um, the samples. What type of the samples are um, actually the samples of the um, animal cells that I have here. This is one slice of the uh, a tissue from the muscle of the uh, of, uh, meat of an animal. So I just cut and, pl and place it here. Uh, and you know that one of the conditions to use the a light microscope uh, is that you have to prepare a very thin uh, specimen so, the spe so, so that the light can pass through. Um, as you can see here, the specimen of this tissue is quite thick. So what you need to do is that you have to prepare very thin slices of this one. It is very hard to use the uh, cutter or anything else to just simply prepare it the equal size and diameters of the slices, uh, thin slices of this uh, tissue. So what I have to do, we need to go through some processes. We don't have uh, some materials and equipment here, unfortunately, but I have prepared those things that I had available, I can replace and set up them to use to prepare these samples. So first I do this one, and after that I go to the preparation of the next of the specimens. So what I have here is a solid paraffin, a paraffin, and then a wax. Then I put on the Bunsen burner flame and let it under a very gentle fire heat, gently heat it and melt it. Reduce the flame and let it to get liquid turn into liquid paraffin so we can use. Um, before that, I have to wash the samples by using the uh, distilled water. I have some distilled water here already. So, okay. And then put it on the what time? I cut one a slice of it, perhaps a little bit of it. Not too big, not too small. I keep the rest. If I have done some mistake and I need to repeat my test so I can use it. I take this tissue, now it is prepared. A little bit extra for I remove this one here. I don't need this part. The wax in the steel is not liquid. Once it's turned into the liquid, I wait a little bit for it to get cold. Then I place the sample inside it and wait for the sample to get actually molded inside the uh, wax. So this is one of the ways we put it in the solid paraffin. And then uh, once it got turned into the solid, you use a um, uh, cutter, actually there is a machine which is which cuts the slices of the specimen in a, any desired uh, diameter that you want or thickness. But here we don't have, so I have just have a blade that I actually cut it into half, so it's not any more dangerous, it's safe to use. So once the wax is completely Melted. I put the specimen into the white tire and pour on the sample. That's it. I wait for this paraffin and the uh, tissue, both of them, the tissue inside it, to get solid into salt foam, so then I can remove it and I can cut it into the 
uh, thin actually specimens that I want. So I want to make sure that it is completely solid. So I have to still wait for it. And then I can remove it from the this part. Still, because I didn't have a proper play, this part is still outside of the wax. I can put more wax on it. The sample needs to get dried well, so still it is wet. I just leave it here to get air dried and get cold. While I'm waiting for the sample to get dried, I, I will continue uh, pre uh, to prepare the other samples. The other sample is the um, plant tissue. So um, I have selected a salaries, which is easy to work with. So the first thing that you have to do is to wash the um, plant well. I mean, Once it is done, I get one small sample of it. We have to prepare a very thin slices of it. As thin as we can. We don't have that uh, cutter, which is actually for this purpose. So I think if I use the razor blade, it would be much more better. As thin as you can, okay? You take the scalpel, take it out. You can put it in a beaker. I wash my beaker first with tap water. Then I pull a little bit of distilled water. I, I don't want my sample to get dried and then to die. Because once the sample is dead, the stain cannot penetrate into it, so you cannot stain it. The stain only works when the plant cells are alive. So make sure that you keep it always hydrated. So immediately, you put it in a, in a beaker, which is filled with the distilled water. So we avoid the cells to get dry, dehydrated, and be killed. So I just try to make more samples to see which one is more preferred. The diameter, everything is good. So you may watch my hand. It won't be easy to show my hand to you. Let me see. Yes. So as thin as we can. See which of these slices would be the best one. Still, they are thick. I make it... It should be completely straight. It should the cut should be exactly directly yes pointed to the yeah the stem of this celery is still is not proper. These slides are not the slides are not properly made, so I have to continue. Make you more and more slices. Let's see which one. That's the best one. You should make sure that you do not cut your hand too. And you need the tweezer perhaps. To hold this. This one is not bad. I just take it out. I put inside the the beaker, which is filled with the distilled water. This one's not bad too. This is good. This is good. The other one. I take this one. Put it inside the beaker. And okay. Now. Show you this one. 
I put it inside the beaker again. Okay, these are very thick. I don't want. I just throw out. I just choose the finest one. I want to change the celery stem because that is very thick and big. So maybe the slices can be more precise. I threw this part away. I try again. I think this is a very good one, not bad. Okay, I place it inside the beaker immediately. And I try to take another one. I think it's enough. I place this one back. We need to actually we have prepared NaOCl. I mean a sodium uh, hypochlorite. Uh, it's around twenty percent the concentration, and I just leave the samples for twenty for around fifteen to twenty minutes inside the, uh, this solution and wait for the specimen to uh, lose its color because I want to stain it later. So I remove it from the uh, distilled water and place it inside the NaOCl. So as I said, we choose the best and perfect, the most perfect uh, sample that we have taken, which is the, the slice. And it's quite thin and perfect in shape. Before staining the specimen, we have to put it in a, a, a NaOCl, a sodium hypochlorite solution, it's around 20% for 15 to 20 uh, minutes and leave it there to uh, become discolored. So after that, it is ready for uh, staining. Um, now I have this solution. You have to be careful because the NaOCl is quite dangerous when it is especially in contact with the detergents and soap, uh, it produces chlorine gas, so you better be very careful handling this one. And uh, it should be uh, under a good air conditioning or ventilation. So the sample is put into hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite solution for around 15 minutes. I leave it there and continue with the rest of the experiment. The animal tissue, the muscle tissue is ready. So. This is quite hard now that you can cut it into the slices with the different diameters that you want. Yes. So as you can see, the sample is here. So the only I need to take very small size samples from it. Not easy to show you on the it's not easy to handle. Uh -huh. I think this one will be okay. I think this is okay. This one should be put on the slide. Sample should be put on the slide. A little bit of the. We don't have glycerin here. So, a little bit of the water. Yes. And they put the cover slip. 45 degree and then flipped.
This is my visual. You can write the date, time, and of the preparation and everything, all the specification, and just leave it there. Now, this one is over. I put it aside. Uh, because I don't have time, I mean, we don't have time, and there is classes also running here. So what I want to do is that just uh, very fast, uh, I remove the, I cannot wait for too long for this specimen to discolor. The one of the samples, I take out and wash it with the, distilled water. Be very careful if you're working with the sodium hypochlorite uh, right? like this. Yes, that's ready. I put it here. Always keep it wet and hydrated because it, once the cell is dies, uh, it cannot be stained anymore. The next of the thing is that after washing with the distilled water for two minutes, in order to neutralize the uh, the basic, uh, actually, pH of the NaOCl. I'll put it in, in uh, acetic acid, around 10% concentration. Acetic acid, 10% concentration, you can see that. So for how long? Two minutes only, not too long. I don't want to kill it. I just want to neutralize it. That's it, two minutes. And then, once after two minutes, you have to rinse the acid, acetic acid with the uh, distilled water again. That's it. I take this one out, rinse this one out, and again, put it here, and again, rinse it. Okay, that's it. This is the specimen now. I leave it inside the distilled water again. Yeah. Now, for five minutes, you should put it in the stain solution. So I just remove this one, put some stain in it. Um, for actually, for seeing the nucleus for the globules, like. Um, like white blood cells, red blood cells, and also the inner structure like the nucleus and all these things. We can use GIMSA, but we have usually for the other uh, cellular and the uh, cell walls and the plant cell, we can use iodine solution. So for the animal cell, usually, you, I suggest you to use the GIMSA, but for the other one, we use colchicine and the iodine you can have dual staining too, but I just do one time staining and not more. I put the sample here inside this after remove it from the... So for five minutes, it should be in the stain. Stain another one with another stain that I have. I take one another sample. Then... Rinse it immediately. Put it in the acetic acid again. But I don't leave it too long. This is what I have here. This one in the acetic acid, I don't want it to leave it so long, so I remove it immediately. I'll remove immediately and put it in a distilled water. I remove the other one, the other one, which is now somehow stained. I cannot keep it for too long in it because we don't have time. So I bring it out. I should rinse with the distilled water again. I use distilled water to wash it. 
to remove the excess stain from it. Sample is ready. I keep it hydrated again. A little bit of some drops of the distilled water on it. I leave it there. The other sample now is rinsed completely. I can stain it this time by using another stain like Colchison. stain can only uh, color and stain some um, some part of the cell that's why we use you can use different stains at the same time in a different processes after finishing I can put more layer of the stain on it and so I can have as uh, you can see a better actually image of the whole um, uh, components of inside the uh, cells like the cell wall individually can be identified easily under the microscope okay for i just leave it here so once it gets prepared it should be here into the stain for five or ten minutes after that i wash it so i go to prepare the slide for this one that i have actually prepared this specimen, uh, put it on the slide and get it prepared for observation under the microscope. So I got the slides. I take one slide and one cover slip. And the next step, I take the specimen here. It's quite ready. It's not hydrated. I take it, place it on the slide. Uh, the angle that you want to put the uh, slide on the uh, the cover slip on the slide, it should be forty five degrees, and after that, leave it. Make the angle 45 and then leave the slide. And use it for the later experiments. You can put some uh, glycerin, but if not, you can just put some drops of water. And then the excess water can be removed. This slide also is ready, so I take the other one, the other sample, which is now is uh, ready to be washed, is a stain. Now I wash it using the distilled water. Okay, I have to remove the stains which are excess. Extra stain and color. Once it's got ready, we put it on the slide. We prefer the slide to wash under the Microscope, 45, leave it, a little bit push, a little bit of water, we don't have dropper, that's why too much water comes, if you have too much water, the extra water, you can just use a tissue to just remove it. Now I place the samples on the microscope, on the stage of the microscope, you can see. And I am watching it under the microscope. I just want to share the photo of uh, uh, each sample under the microscope under the lower magnification. Okay. Thank you.
It's better to sterilize the test tubes before doing everything and you need to put wear gloves to make sure that the, the inside of the test tube is completely sterilized and is not in contact with any bacteria or anything. So I've taken the sample from this drainage uh, close to this area. You can take the sample from anywhere from the swimming pool if it is, if it is chlorinated so definitely you cannot find anything in it and all the organisms inside it are required uh, or all died as I have searched before so you can if you don't have access to any uh, rain water waste water or any uh, stagnant water anything like this um, so you can just put one bucket filled with the water and put it outside under the sun for for example three days or four days and after that you can go and take the sampling from there so now I don't do that, I just go outside, take from somewhere which is already uh, drain water here. So you have to be careful, wear gloves, and when you take the sampling, they put the samples into the, the test tube that you have sterilized before, and you put the date and the name and the time and everything on it. And you can also add uh, the location of the sampling too. I prepared the slide of the water that I have, the sample of the water that I have taken. I put it under the slide and I started with the lowest magnification and try to uh, put a very small amount of water on it, just one drop, and try to spread on the slide evenly so, um, so you get a very thin layer of that. And then uh, you have to look into the microscope. You will see, you will try to adjust by the uh, adjusting knob. And first with the biggest one, then with the smallest one. So to reach to a depth that you find some uh, organisms are floating inside the water. The atome, promises, um, and all this. With a very low magnification, you only see very small dots. So I try to, after I found the organisms in a defined depth, I start uh, using, uh, I start changing the magnification and you start using the higher magnification. Try to do the adjustment again by using the big knob and then uh, the fine knob. You can see the pharmacy.